Hello, and thank you for your interest in the loose ACLS dissertation fellowships in American art, which are offered by the American Council of Learned Societies, or ACLS. Our agenda includes a brief introduction to ACLS. We will then move into an overview of this program, including its goals and the core application components. Finally, we'll look over some tips for creating an effective application. Founded in 1919, ACLS is a small private nonprofit organization headquartered in New York City. We are a federation of 80 scholarly societies, including major disciplines in the humanities and interpretive social sciences. Organizations such as the MLA, APA, CAA, and AAA are our members, as well as many associations representing subdisciplines and interdisciplinary fields as well. I hope you will take a second to go to our website to learn more about our membership. We are interested in being as broadly encompassing of humanistic inquiry as we can be, and to bring voices from various fields of humanistic studies to the table to help us set the agenda for the direction of humanistic research and inquiry. Our mission at ACLS is the advancement of humanistic studies in all fields of the humanities and social sciences, and the maintenance and strengthening of the national societies dedicated to those studies. One way that we do that is by working with learned societies to think about issues of shared concern and to come up with ways to address those issues and support scholars broadly at a variety of institutions. At ACLS, we also provide direct support for research through fellowships and grants, and we offer multiple programs in any given year. I encourage you to take a look at our full roster of offerings throughout the year, as we are often adding new programs. We'll be supporting nearly 400 fellows over the course of this competition year, and those fellows will be selected from between 3,000 to 4,000 applications across all of our programs. Each year, we work with between 600 and 700 peer reviewers to help us select our fellows and grantees, and those peer reviewers also provide feedback to all applications. Even if an applicant may not be able to win a fellowship in a given year, they can receive feedback to improve not just their project, but also their proposals. This year, we'll be offering up to seven Loose ACLS dissertation fellowships, and those awards consist of a $42,000 package of stipends. That's a $38,000 stipend for the academic year with up to $4,000 in research funds. These funds are intended for travel to collections, field work, or other research-related costs. The tenure of the award is an academic year or equivalent to be held for any continuous period of nine to 12 months between July 2024 and May 2026. In addition to the monetary support that this fellowship provides, we will provide some professional development opportunities, including webinars and workshops, as well as opportunities for networking among the members of the fellow community, but also more broadly across ACLS's community of scholars, alumni, and reviewers. Our full eligibility criteria are listed on our website, and I strongly encourage all of you to view our competition page where the eligibility criteria are outlined. What you see here is an abbreviated version, but I want to stress that the full eligibility criteria are best read on our website. Applicants must be a PhD candidate at a university in the United States in art history or a related field, such as Native American and, and Indigenous Studies, ethnic studies, or African-American studies. Students preparing theses for the Master of Fine Arts degree are not eligible. You must have a dissertation focused on a topic in the history of the visual arts of the United States, including all facets of Native American art. Projects should be focused foremost on the art object and or image and employ an art historical or visual studies approach. You must have completed all requirements for the PhD, except the dissertation before beginning fellowship tenure. You cannot previ have previously applied for this fellowship more than once. And you must be a US citizen, permanent resident, indigenous person residing in the United States through the rights associated with the Jay Treaty of 1794, a DACA recipient, asylee, refugee, or individual granted temporary protected status in the United States.
This program seeks to promote innovative scholarship and cultivate new leaders by promoting early career American art scholars in a critical moment in their careers. I'm going to briefly go through the application and review process, but before we jump in, I'd like to emphasize that grant writing is a skill that improves with practice and grant writing is distinct from academic writing or scholarly writing. The first components of the application are fairly straightforward informational sections, asking for your name, address, educational background, and employment information. These sections are what we call the common profile, which creates a profile for you with some basic information that carries over to another application if you apply for more than one ACLS fellowship in one year. The next section of the application includes loose ACLS fellowship specific questions, which ask how long you've been in your program and some optional demographic questions. You'll also be asked to provide a title for your project, an abstract, which should be a brief description of the project and the broader implications of your research for both the field of art history and that of American art. That page with your title and abstract is the first page that reviewers see. It's the first impression that you'll be making. Your proposal can be no longer than eight pages in 11 point or Arial or Helvetica font, inclusive of all images and any footnotes or endnotes. You are required to provide at least three images related to your project. When describing your project, be sure to describe both the nature and scope of your project, the various approaches or methodologies used, and the significance of this work within your specific and general fields. Be sure to provide a brief statement on progress already made and a tentative schedule of work to be accomplished during the grant period. The annotated bibliography should be no more than four pages double-spaced in Arial or Helvetica 11-point font, containing 10 key secondary sources for your project. The annotated bibliography is meant to provide an overview of the most important resources used to shape your project. For each reference, please provide a brief description, two to four sentences, of the source and its relevance to your project. Primary sources should be listed separately without annotation at the beginning or end of the annotated list of secondary sources. You may include an optional publication list of up to two pages in Arial or Helvetica 11 point font of publications, exhibitions, presentations, and scholarly or university service. You must include two reference letters, one of which must come from your dissertation advisor. You will also include a statement from your institution, preferably from your department chair, director of graduate studies, or dean. Finally, some tips. Read the ACLS website, follow the instructions and the formatting requirements and log into the application portal early so that if you have any technical questions, those can be addressed sooner rather than later. Create a checklist of application components. Because there are so many parts to this application, it's important to have all of them together and to check them off one by one as you complete them. Match your expertise and plans to the program's objectives. This is a really important tip for all grant writing. Make sure you understand what the goals of the program are and whether or not you are explicitly indicating how your project matches up to those goals. Spend time on your abstract. Look at current and former loose ACLS fellow profiles on the ACLS website, for examples. Every piece of the application counts, so don't skimp on things like the publication list or the annotated bibliography. Provide us an argument, not just a description of your project, so that we have a sense of the stakes of your project. Consider who your audience is. Think about who might be a part of our review committee. Be clear and avoid jargon. If there are terms that you use repeatedly throughout your proposal, make sure you explain what that term is at the very beginning. 
If possible, ask a friend or colleague to read a draft in advance. Choose your references thoughtfully and prepare them to write strong letters. Ask them early for a reference letter, and if you have the ability to, share your proposal with them. Don't understate your accomplishments. The review committee really wants to see everything that you've accomplished. And lastly, our upcoming deadline, October 25th, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Apply, and good luck.